Morning, everyone. Thanks, John. Thank you. Um, everyone, all right? Everyone, a bit cold? Yes. Right, let's stand and sing then, warm ourselves up. So if you can stand up, if you're happy to. someone a nice hug and um, wish them, I, I don't know if you, you're all going to say Merry Christmas, I've finished work, now you finish work. So it's Merry Christmas from me, Merry Christmas everyone, have a hug, bless someone this morning. Back together then. You know, Roy's using it as an excuse to give his cards out and that's what not what this is about. <laughs> not what this is about. Just wait for my card and then every card is different. Thank you. A check for ten thousand pounds, thank you, Roy. Gosh. I hope everyone else has got the same. We're going to sing another one. 
Oh, let's spread them out then. So shall I ask Pete what he wants? Let's do another one. We're going to do another one. Should bring, should bring Patsy. Not allowed in church. See if he thinks England are still in the World Cup. Yeah, there we go. Right, okay, good to see everybody. Good to see everybody. Very good to see everyone. Right, okay, we are we're gonna show uh, we're gonna just keep it as a big surprise as we go on, really, what's gonna happen here. Um largely because I'm making it up as I go along. No, that's not true. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we've just got a bit of a fun video for you. Um, I, I wonder whether uh, I hope not that this is what Christmas is going to look like in your house over the, the next coming days and weeks. Here we go. Hey Dad, I'm actually watching a video on how to prepare a ham. 
right here. So thank you. Thank you so much. Boys, no devices at the table. It starts with her. It starts with her. It starts with him. It starts with him. And then there are And then there are But I do know this. I'm thankful for you guys. What do you say we go ahead and carve this turkey? <laughs> oh my gosh, Luke Johnson's on live. His dad's cutting the turkey. I just love his family. Hey guys, let's just get a look at all the cousins hanging out, having fun. Guys, seriously, can we put the devices down? Okay, everyone get together for the photo. Would you like to go get some chocolate pie with me? I would love to. Let's get together all. What a sight, what a sight, what a sight, what a sight. <laughs> Just, uh, just a message for you to do that. Um, instead, why not play some games? So we're going to play a game right now, okay? And uh, it's a little bit like Pass the Parcel, okay? Uh, and so uh, what we'll do is we're going we're gonna to start at the front. We'll work along and then back down the rows. When the music stops, if it stops on you, will you get to open it? <laughs> Bit more excited than that, please. <laughs> no, a bit more excited than that, please. <laughs> that's better, that's better. Okay, so we start over here. You're going to provide us with the music. Yes, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. I shall find you. Yeah. Today, today, Oh, there you 
That's it, looks like you've got a little party hat down there. <laughs> Put that on if you wish. That would be fun. All right? Just down there. <coughs> later. Right, where are we going now? Hokey Cokey, everybody. Oh. Are you ready for this? Yeah. It's all good. Uh, of course, Larry, we've got to get them up doing the actions. <laughs> oh. Everybody up! Yeah. 
Anybody into some of you are into spot the difference? See if you can spot the difference uh, on some of these. Anybody get all of them? Some people, well done. Anybody just get one wrong? Any just got two wrong? Well done you guys, well done, very good. Uh, I think one more carol before we have our kids up for our nativity. seated it's absolutely up to you but if you're sitting behind Andy you can't see you now so you'll have to stand up <laughs>
it's really nice to see you all. <coughs> just shifting furniture around, just bear with us a little bit. <laughs> okay, now I don't know what kind of a year you've had, but for a lot of people it's been a year of lots and lots of emotions. <coughs> There's been times in this year that's been lovely. There's been times in this year that haven't quite been so lovely. There's been a little bit of stress. There's been a little bit of laughter. But what's lovely at Christmas is that we can just take a moment and just think, wow, Jesus really came. He really loves me and I'm not on my own. And that truth can then catapult us to, into the new year, can't it? Now, the other thing that's great about this time of year is our kids' church nativity. Isn't it? It is the highlight, because they are all amazing. And I, you can't see yet, but I can see here, and I can just see the most beautiful, smiling faces. And I hope in a minute that when they all, one by one, come and stand on here, that they don't get too shy, and that you get to see how beautiful their smiles are as well. Now this year as well has been a bit of an unusual year, hasn't it, in that we, we had something very unusual happen. Something that we all expected and yet nobody wanted to happen. And that was that our dear Queen died, didn't she? And what happened is that we had people proclaiming the new king like we'd never seen before. I don't know whether anyone else went and they saw town criers and heralds and councillors and all sorts of people having this message that the, that the officials of our country were sending throughout not just London, not just Great Britain, but all of the territories all over the world, heralds said that the new king was now in place. And that reminded us in Kiss Church, we looked at that a little bit and we realised that actually that's what lots of the people in our nativity story were also doing. They were messengers. They were proclaiming the fact that there was a new king coming. And I was like, wow, that's not happened in my lifetime. But we're all part of that. So all of our kids are very excited that even where, if they're here as a sheep, they are proclaiming the fact that King Jesus came and is still to come as well. So I want you to keep hold of that truth this morning, that King Jesus is exciting, that King Jesus came as a baby, but King Jesus said he's coming back to sort out all the wrongs, and he said he was going to do it soon. So we're excited, aren't we? Okay, so we're going to play a song. As our nativity starts, you, the, Ben, thank you very much, because I know you must have listened to this song a hundred and three <laughs> times, and you put the words on here. So as our Mary and Joseph make their way onto the stage, I'd like all of our other nativity characters to come and make their way and sit here at the front so that you can come onto the stage when it's your turn to shine. Okay, so are we ready? I'm leaving Galilee, so Mary come with me, because I'm going back again to the town of Bethlehem. It may take very long, but it's where my family's from, so we're going back again to the town of Bethlehem.
It may be a bit messy. We didn't have much time. Mary and Joseph, a pitiful sight. For tired and dirty, they gave me a fright. Sickly or dying, what was the matter? A room in the inn, impossible chatter. My room's all taken, not one empty bed. There'll be no room in all Bethlehem, I said. For the eyes were just glowing with hunger and need. I closed the avoidance, so I tried a good deed. Whilst cleaning up the stables, I cooked up a meal. We helped all we could, at least that's how I feel. Well, we noticed that Mary was expecting, and soon, so we prayed for delivery right under the moon. The child came so quickly, his face seemed a light, and it felt had shone his presence so bright. Joseph said softly, it's Jesus, my friend. God sent him among us to bring to an end fear and hatred, darkness and sin. Instead, God gave light to let God love in. The animals are coming in for the night. My animals were calm and quieter than normal. They often were noisy and never too formal. They always were eating or else they were sleeping. The stable required continuous sleeping sweeping but on christmas night they were strangely in awe the sight of the baby and all that uh, and all that they saw it was as if they were uh, that god had just hushed them had fed them and watered them carefully brushed them they knew i believe that god had been able to work a miracle there in that stable on a hilltop a little distance away a wondrous event was occurring we don't often see angels in flight. On, on the first Christmas, they lit up the night. They appeared to the shepherds, and boy, were they scared. Angels fired one. Will any lives be spared? Are they here to destroy us? Is our time up on earth up? Have we seen our last day? Have we drunk our last cup? But peace on earth, goodwill to all, was the angel's sweet song. That was their call. For the light shone that dazzled for all who did see. The angels hallelujahed and sang out with glee. To Bethlehem, shepherds, the angels directed, to see Jesus the Christ, whom God has perfected. Go worship the Lord and follow his ways, and you'll find Christmas joy for all of your days. Let's meet those shepherds that the angels appeared to. I'll find out what happens next. shepherds I told you were scared and stunned too much hard work or too much hot sun that's what they thought that's how they explained perplexed and afraid they loudly complained but the angels song calmed them and then they believed they rejoiced when they knew and they were quite relieved and they went to the stable and worshipped the Lord and they left and began to spread the good word Last but not least, last but not least, we we'll wake, we we'll welcome our wise men. <laughs> the star that shone brightly led the wise person at night to Bethlehem stable to the main, the main strange light. <laughs> they came bearing gifts of worship and love, praising God the wonders heaven above. The wise men, the wise men, the wise men were kings, and they knelt and stood. It was the other thing they ever saw. If kings and gifts and that of bowing with others, then maybe you too can worship with pleasure. The person, the person of Jesus, 
He came to us all. So when we are praised, for he, for he brings us God's call. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Come to God for healing from strife. Come unto me, all, all you who labour, and I'll give you rest for heaven's sake. Forever to Saviour. It was the very first Christmas, and there in a manger, the Christ child was born, it couldn't have been stranger. Shepherds saw angels, wise men a star. They came to see Jesus, they came from afar. They knew he was special, God's very own son. He came to the earth to love everyone. He grew up in time, the saviour, the Lord, to be worshipped each day and to be loved and adored. So now at Christmas we all take delight in the gift that God gave us that first Christmas night, in the gifts we receive and the ones that we give. Let us never forget it's Christ that we all live. Please join us in singing the Calypso Carol. <laughs>
stay there, guys, for me, just for a moment. You're going to help me in the first part of what I'm about to do next. Is that okay? Um, and then you can go, and then I'll need some of you, but most of you can go and sit down. You can grab a colouring um, and some other activities from the front as you come down. And also, any other children that are here that would like to come and grab uh, a colouring, make their own little stables thing with stickers, that kind of stuff, uh, you can come and you can do that uh, as well. And uh, we'll just, uh, that way it'd be absolutely brilliant. Okay. So um, let me just say that, um, let me just first of all quickly do some notices. Just to let you know that uh, it's, it's been absolutely brilliant to see you uh, this morning for our nativity service. We have another carol service this evening, evening carols at 6.30. We'd love you to be a part of that. We are hopefully live streaming that if the, if travelling in the dark nights is difficult, but um, but much better if you could join with us and be part of that today. And uh, and also next Sunday, of course, we have our Sunday morning, our Christmas Day morning service, and uh, we'll be uh, taking a look hopefully at what the kids have had for Christmas as they show their presents off. And, uh, and you grown-ups, of course, can do that as well, if you want to, because uh, we're not ageist here at all. Uh, show your, your uh, Christmas presents off as well. Okay, we've also, um, over the last few Sundays, we've been looking at the different meanings of Advent, and we've been lighting our Advent candles. Okay, and each candle, you might be aware, uh, means something. So the first a candle that we lit, that was all about hope. And Laura shared with us as she preached how Jesus is our source of hope. Then we, uh, we had joy. The second candle meant joy. And uh, Alan talked about um, Mary and Joseph and their obedience. And he linked that to joy as well. And then last week I talked about the angels appearing to the shepherds and I talked about how uh, Jesus is our source of peace and how we can take a hold of that peace um, ourselves. Today I want to talk about love. Would you like to just come and help me light this candle please? All you've got to do is just flick that bottom switch there. That's the one. And there we go. And we've lit. Oops, I've just killed a robin. That's not good. <laughs> it's not a real robin. We're all right. Okay, uh, he's fine. Oh, sweet. Right, okay. And that's absolutely brilliant. So this week I want to talk about uh, love. And the most famous verse in the Bible that talks about love is this one. And this is what I need your help for. So can you please, I need somebody to come and hold this for me. Somebody else? Go on then, come forward. Once you've got it, come forward please. Just come forward. Okay, somebody else please. Yeah. Someone else. There we go. You come and stand. Can I direct you, mate? Is that all right? Please, you come and stand next there. Uh, yes, there we go. You come and stand there. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Anybody else? We've got loads more. Anybody else? You going to have one? Could you guys move across just a little bit? Shuffle along a little bit. Shuffle along a little bit. Just jump down onto the first thing. That's okay. Watch that one. Got uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, if you move across, Mary, if you move across, thank you. Good, 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 good. Come forward, come forward. Okay, they will have to probably go down the aisle. That's all right. Okay. Okay, I've got some more yet. You come forward, forward in front of the Christmas tree, mate. That's okay. You gonna come? I need, I need three more. Anybody else? 
Okay, so, right, so let's read this, shall we, if we can. These are, it's chaos, isn't it? It's great. Um, hold, it up, uh, hold it up nice and high so everyone can see. So it said, God, that obviously means loved the world so much that he gave his, own, his only son so that everyone who believes in him, turn that over, will not perish, but have eternal life. And that's John 3, 16. Brilliant. Now, what I want you to do is most of you are going to go and sit down. But I need you to stay. You to stay. Just so, Is that okay? Is it all right? Or you can go and sit down if you prefer. Okay. You want to sit down? I'll take that one then. Who wants that one instead? You have that one then. Okay. I want you to stay. I need you to stay unless you prefer not to. Do you want to stay? Okay. That's fine. You can stay. Uh, you know what? I need my notes. I'm losing my words. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're nearly there. And who's got everyone? You've got everyone. Do you want to stay there or do you want to give that to somebody else to sit there? You're going to stay, okay. Uh, and who's got life? Can I take your life and give that to somebody? <laughs> that was great. No, that's bad. Okay. Okay, you can have that one if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Okay, the rest of you, you can grab something and you can go sit down, please. Okay. Uh, um, and, the re and you can hand the rest of them back to me, if that's okay. You can take... That one. Oh, okay, cool. Just pop it down. No, no, no. Just those... Just those. So, I should, you guys, the rest, once you guys have settled down, if you guys want to step up onto the top stage, if you're helping me, okay, what have we got? We've got life, we've got Gave, who's got everyone? Oh, everyone. I need somebody to hold everyone. Who's gonna, are you going to hold them? There you go. Everyone. That sounds about right, yeah. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Ooh. Right, okay. Now, what I need is... I need to swap here. The one here. <coughs> Who's got... Has somebody got... Oh, yes, sir. So, I need you, please, to come round here. <coughs> To other side of other side, please. Swap him round. Okay. So we've got God. I need you to just hold this one. Okay, so, okay. So here we are. So we've got some words here. We've got love, God, gave. Can you two swap round? Everyone, life. Okay? And what we've got here by doing this is a definition of what 
God's love is. We've got love equals God gave everyone life. And I want to look at those four words in turn, and then I need you to help me later on, okay? Fantastic. So, let me just pop down here to do that. So, you guys continue to hold that. So, okay. Absolutely brilliant. We have, by doing that, we've given a definition of God's love. And I want to look at each of these four <coughs> words in turn, if that's okay. So, the very first one we want to look at, we've talked about love, but here is, well, I want to talk about God, okay? Now, the Bible links God with love very, very closely. In fact, it says that God is love. It's not just that God does love. It's the fact that God is love. God is love. He's the very definition of what love is. And we can't really begin to understand what love is if we don't understand that God is love. We, without God, we don't really get what it's all about. 1 John 4, 7 in the Bible says, Let us love one another because love comes from God. And the story of the Bible, the story of history, is all about how this God, who is the very embodiment of love, reached down to show his love in various ways and demonstrate it to people. By showing us the best way to live, by teaching us to love one another, and thereby loving through us, and by drawing us and revealing himself to us, so that we might know his love. And it's from Christmas that God began to show his love to us in the greatest way. But let's move on to the next word. The next word is gave. And Christmas, of course, is closely associated with giving. And so is love. Love actually is, in its very essence, the unselfish act of giving, either of ourselves or of ourselves, for somebody else's benefit, somebody else's well-being and happiness. And that can be somebody that we know, somebody that's close to us, or that could be somebody that we don't know at all. A man, a, 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 a man was sent to a, to a home to collect a faulty Venetian blind. <coughs> he knocked on the door just as the, uh, the couple were having lunch with some friends. The lady of the house got up, she opened the door, the man said, I'm here for the Venetian blind. So she reached into her purse, gave him a £20 note, closed the door and said, somebody was collecting. <laughs> you got it, I'm glad you got it. Nobody else is awake, but you know, it's all good. That woman, even though she misunderstood what was going on, she showed her love by giving. And God does the same. God shows his love by giving. He's always done that. He's given us life. He's given us breath. Every good and perfect gift, says the Bible, is from above, coming from the Father of the heavenly light. Somewhere else it says, in him we live and move and have our being. If we truly appreciated it, we would know that everything we have, we have to thank God for. But his greatest act of giving was sending his son, was sending Jesus. He gave his one and only son, God himself, born as a baby, and living among us. Long ago, in Persia, there was a wise king who loved his subjects and wanted to know about their lives. So every so often, he would dress himself in rags and go out and meet his people. Go to the poorest of the poor. He would sit in their homes, eat food with them, and find out about their li lives, to try to speak some good words to them to make their lives better. One day he went and he sat with such a man. And then a few months later, a few weeks later, he went back to see that man, but this time as the king. And he asked the man, what would you like me to give you? And the man says, you've given me so much. You say you came into this place. You ate my food. You shared yourself with me. You left your palace. You, you spent your time with me. You brought joy to my heart. You can keep your riches. You have given me so much more. That's a picture of what 
Jesus did. He left the glory of heaven and he came and he lived among us. God's gift was his birth, but it was also his life. And actually it was also, of course, his death as he died and took the wrong things that we have done upon himself. Jesus gave his life for us, ours upon the cross. And the Bible sh clearly shows him, making it clear that he laid down his life. No one took it from him. And we can see that God sent his son in order to die for us. Let's go on to the next word, which is everyone. Some versions of the Bible use the term whosoever. I like both those phrases. Absolutely brilliant. It suggests the idea of being universal without exception. And Jesus said, I will never turn away anyone who comes to me. And we had earlier in the verse, we had God so lo loved the world so much. That also carries that idea of everyone without exception. God's love is for everyone. There's nobody that God does not love. There are people that feel that God doesn't love them, but he does. There are people that we may look at and think, how can God love them? But he does. He loves them very much. There are circumstances that can sometimes make it look as if that love is not there, but it really, really is. And he, but even though that love is unchanging, there is a part of this that we mustn't ignore. Would you come up and stand with that? It says, who believes in him? There is something that we must do. There's a story about a man who wanted to win the lottery. Okay? And he said, God, he prayed. He said, God, would you let me win the lottery? That week he didn't win the lottery. The next week he said, God, will you let me win the lottery? And he said, that week he didn't win the lottery. Finally, he gets desperate and he starts to pray and he says, God, I don't understand. Why won't you let me win the lottery? He says, how about meeting me halfway and buying a ticket? <laughs> now, I'm, I'm obviously not, uh, not encouraging necessarily playing the lottery. But I want to talk about the fact that for us there is a ticket to buy, or rather a ticket that we've been given that we need to cash in. Every single one of us has been given a ticket to cash in. It's God's love. It's Jesus coming for us. It's our ticket, but we are the ones that need to cash it in. And we do that by believing in him, by trusting in him. See, Jesus had to die in order to win us life because each of us had done wrong, had broken his law. The Bible calls it sin and it tells us that the wages of it is death, whereas God's got a gift for us, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Jesus' death won the basis of forgiveness from which comes life. And we trust him with our lives, the one who loved us. Because we have this last word, life. It was all for life. God's love gives life. God gives life. Our verse said that it's eternal life. Elsewhere we have life to the full. Elsewhere we have life that's full of light. Elsewhere we have a new life. And today you can know that new life. One for you by the death of Jesus, who is now alive forevermore. It can be yours. His presence and loving kindness now, and a home in heaven, everlasting life. And you can claim it because if God loves everyone and sent Jesus for everyone, that includes you, and you've been given a ticket to cash in too. And so today I want to encourage you. Lots of the people in this, everyone in this room has been given a ticket to cash in. <coughs> Lots of you have already done that. Some of you might still need to do that. And can I encourage you to say to Jesus, come into my life. 
I give my life to you. Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me because you love me so much. Come into my life and help me to follow you. And you're cashing your ticket. You see, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us so that we could know life. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for our time together today. Thank you for your great love shown to us. We thank you for it. And help us to never forget your love, that eternal gift that you gave us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have a final carol as we move our time to an end. Oh yes. And I don't know if we brought the baskets in. I'm going to fetch those. We're going to take up our offering during this. If you're a guest here visiting with us today, don't feel under any obligation to give. We do this as part of our worship. And I must make sure I don't pinch half your sheets of paper. There you go. Dan, we're going to do O Come All Ye Faithful. <coughs> Is that all right with you? Thank you. Got the thumbs up. If you're willing and able, please stand.
could forgive us of our sins and we thank you and praise you for that and this morning and over the next few days and couple of weeks we thank and praise you that you were born for us amen Brew and a biscuit. God bless you. And a biscuit.